Welcome to today's homeowner with Danny Lipford. Expert advice on improving your home from the pages of today's homeowner magazine and professional remodeler Danny Lipford. Well, I'm glad you joined us this week. You know, many times houses are built like the one you see behind me, where it has a basic one level design with a garage tucked underneath. Now, people are finding this is a very cost effective way of adding living area to their house by converting or enclosing this area. Now, this particular case, we're adding a game room, a full bathroom, and providing an area for the homeowners to park their golf cart since the golf course is nearby. Now it really presents a challenge for us in providing a full bathroom because of the drain concerns. You know the drain needs to run downhill in most cases, but we'll show you a situation here where it actually runs uphill and works well. We'll show you. Stay with us. Welcome back. I was taking a look at some of the bricks we were able to find at a local salvage yard that match perfectly the bricks that we have on the house. Now we'll need about a thousand of these jumbo type of bricks to fill in around the windows and doors in this area where the old garage door used to be. Now this area where the golf cart will be parked will have two three foot doors that will open out to allow room for the golf cart. Now we're using a fiberglass door in this case because we expect a lot of rain down in this area to have a backsplash against the doors. Wooden doors wouldn't hold up very well, so fiberglass is a perfect alternative. Now here in this large opening, we'll have three windows that'll be positioned side by side. These will be single pane, non-insulated type windows that'll match what we have in the existing part of the house. This is always a key factor when you're trying to blend the new with the old. Make sure you use the exact same windows whenever possible. Also, the brick mason will be back tooling in to each and every brick here so that he can lace all of these bricks in so that you can really not be able to tell where we started. Now, another thing that's always good to consider anytime you're enclosing a garage like this is to take out a section of the existing driveway. We'll be coming in and cutting out a large area here to create a landscape bed so that they can come in a little bit later, install a few plants in here that'll even further be able to hide the fact that we've added on to this house. Now, another thing you have to consider anytime you have a situation like this that's below grade and you've got a lot of dirt embankment around it is making sure that you waterproof it well. A lot of times you'll have a basement in certain parts of the country that may have water that penetrates the walls during some heavy rains and we've made a lot of accommodations to prevent that from happening to the living area once it's completed. My job superintendent's on the inside. We'll discuss a few of those things. A lot of large remodeling companies will have job superintendents that handle the day-to-day -day activities of a project like this. Our job superintendent on this project is Wiley Bullock. Now, Wiley, tell our viewers a few of the other things that you do as a job superintendent. Okay, well, basically, I'm responsible for pre-ordering all the material, uh, coordinating the subcontractors, and also making sure the quality of the work proceeds in the, w in the fashion that it should. Okay, well, it really makes a difference on any remodeling project having someone that can really supervise it properly, it makes the whole process go a lot smoother. Now, when we started on this project, I know there were a couple windows here that gave some good light into the room, but since we're adding the other windows, those aren't necessary, but I know that you've eliminated them for another reason as well. Well, yes. Uh, basically, what we had is we had a water intrusion problem on the opposite side of the home, and basically our ground level is right here on the opposite side of the wall. So we have done another, we've closed in the windows and we have, are going to regrade the dirt away from the area that we've enclosed to help prevent any other possible water intrusion in this area. Okay. Well, I know the brick mason did a good job both on the bricks on the outside and the blocks on the inside to really give a good tight sealer of that, but that wasn't enough to keep the water out. Tell us about the waterproofing. Well, we're, what we've done is we've inspected all the area and we looked for any possible holes or cracks that's originally in the block itself. Uh, we used a mortar caulk that is available to seal all the cracks and do the patching. And basically then we've applied two coats of sealer. You can only apply one coat per day. It's a 12 hour recoat time. And we put one coat on and the following day we put on the next coat. Okay, how is that applied then? 
Uh, basically, you just put it on with a roller or a brush. Okay, well, I noticed you also put it down on the floor. Yes, we've done it just because of the fact that this being an older carport, uh, there's no moisture barrier up underneath. We just helped to put it on to help prevent the sweating and the moisture to protrude uh, through the slab as it is. Okay, and I understand a wood floor is going down here, so yes, that makes sir. it even more important yes, that we is. keep that moisture out of here. Okay, well, you're moving along great on all of this, and I noticed that the air conditioning man was in earlier and was able to get uh, his duct work in, but it goes into that wall and disappears, uh, I guess the unit will be on the other side. Well, yes it is. Originally, uh, there's a crawl space behind that existing wall right there, and we was able to put the unit behind the crawl space, which turned out well for us because it eliminated any fur downs that uh, normally would go into a structure like this to get the AC and the duct work in. Good, and also it saves a lot of square footage because you're not dedicating any of this floor space for the actual furnace to position in. You're able to position it behind the wall. That makes a big difference. It surely does. It eliminates in the, uh, anything from going into the closets and gives them all that open space, which they really need. Okay, well I know the electrician is in the process of doing some of his work, but also I notice um, across the room here the um, carpenters are installing some of the foam board. What's the reason for the foam board? Well, the reason for the foam board is it gives us a, a, a small a moisture barrier and also provides a little bit of insulation for us. Good, good. Well, let's see how they're doing over there. Now, Wiley, that's a real caulking gun there. Yes, it is. With the amount of foam board that we're putting up, we use the bigger guns to apply the adhesive. Now, that's really all that's necessary in terms of just cutting that with a razor knife and. Uh, um, I guess it's just about the same size for each of the pieces that we're putting up. Yes, it is. Everything's on a 16-inch center here, so once you get your first measurement, everything should be able to be pre-cut and just install it as easily as you see. Okay. That's got to make a big difference with the feeling of this room once it's completed with getting the two coats of water seal plus the half inch of foam boards got to make a big difference. Yes it will. Now this is obviously uh, the bathroom. I see you've gotten all of your woodwork on this and all of the foam board up. Yes sir and you can see we've got our trench up here and we're ready for the plumber to do his rough end. Okay well when we come back we'll show you how we're able to put a bathroom downstairs even though the drains are higher than this level. Stay with us we'll be right back. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and Home Repair Pro Alan Lyle show you this week's simple solution. Well, Alan, not everybody has a swimming pool in their backyard, but most anyone that has a house has concrete and problems like this. That's right. What we have here, Danny, is the expansion joint. And by the way, let me say they are great. They allow that expansion and contraction of the concrete or actually in between that concrete mm -hmm. to keep it from cracking. Now what happens though is over a period of time you get these spaces that develop between the expansion joint and the concrete. That's not a good thing because water will actually seep down in between there. Okay, now getting water in these joints is not a good idea because voids can form under this concrete and cause some severe settling. Also in some of the colder climates it's a big problem because of the ice that can form under there. Now I know you've been out here for a mm -hmm. while preparing this. What about preparation? What did you have to do? Well, what I did, I took a circular saw, put on a masonry blade, or what's commonly called an abrasive blade, and scored both sides of the expansion joint so we had a nice even ditch or a groove cut in there mm -hmm. to place our joint compound or the type of caulking that we're going to use. After we did that, we took a nice nylon broom, brushed it out because we wanted a good clean surface to start with. Okay, all right, now what about the type of material that you're using there? That's not just regular caulking. No, this is formulated specifically for concrete. It uh, is lasts, lasts very long, for one thing. Uh, it also protects against the water, the ice. One thing I like about it, it cleans up with water. Good, good, and it's silicone based, so you get that expansion properties right. to be able to continue to expand and contract. And it's just like any other type of caulking project. You wanna make sure that you run that bead in there, and also, you want it about, oh, just flush with the top. You can come back and put a few layers on, and as far as placing it on there, you can just run your finger across there or a damp cloth or sponge. Okay, well, you've got plenty to do. We'll let you get back to that. And go out in your driveway or go out in any concrete you have and see if you have this problem. If you do, address it soon before you have a big problem. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, things are really coming together in this basement bathroom. All of the foam board's been installed and the framing's complete in the bathroom. 
Now to give you an idea how it'll be laid out, this will be where the large walk-in shower will be. Now our customer has a little bit of a disability and makes it a little hard to get in and out of the shower. Now this one will be built with a small curb and also will be installing a seat on this end of the shower so that he can sit down while he's taking the shower. Now you can see how we have the trench that's been established in the original slab. How we did this was by using a concrete saw that had water in the saw itself to keep it good and cool and to make it easier to cut. You can see we have some real good lines in here. The reason for this is because of the drain line has to go down in this for the shower pan as well as the toilet that will be positioned on this side. Now the problem that we mentioned at the start of the show involves the levels that we're at. We're down here and the piping is going to be about a foot below where my hand is and the sewer tie-in that we have beyond this wall is up about three feet taller. Now the way we will work this is with a residential lift station that will be positioned behind this wall and this drain will tie into it and it will be pumped up to the other level. Now, of course, the plumbing supply company delivered it a little while ago. Let's go outside and take a look at it. Well, it looks a lot like a regular garbage can, but it serves a very important purpose in this basement bathroom. Now, the drain line we talked about that will be installed down in the trench that we just looked at will be a PVC pipe, and it will tie in right in this position on the lift station. It will be secured real well, and actually the waste will come out and dump down into this container. Now on the bottom of the container will have this position, which is basically a submersible pump, very similar to the type of pump that you may have in a small fountain out in your yard. Now once the water gets up to a certain point, the little float switch will float up and it'll kick on and then it'll pump all of the waste up through the pipe to where you can connect it to your drain line. So this will be positioned right in the bottom of this, just like that, and then we'll come back with the top it has already the holes prepared for it, and then we have the bolts that will tighten all of this down. We also have some of the little grommets like this that will be used to fill up the other holes. Now this is perfect for a situation like we have here, and whether it's six inches or whether it's six foot that you have to move that wastewater up, this is the way to go. With a two inch PVC line here, you can hook right to the existing drain, and it's virtually maintenance free to handle all of that. Now stay with us when we come back, we'll talk with our electrician about what's involved in providing the electrical wiring to the room we're building, so stay with us. It's time to check out the Home Center for this week's best new product with Danny and today's Homeowner Magazine's Editor-in-Chief, Paul Spring. Now Paul, most homeowners associate suspended tile and suspended ceiling systems with commercial use, but there's quite a few residential uses as well. You're right, Danny, and, and probably one of the best ones is in a basement where you're finishing it off, creating a recreation room, that kind of thing. One of the advantages of a, of a suspended ceiling in that case is that you can still gain access to the plumbing and the electrical raceways up above. Now, I've had to take out a lot of suspended ceiling in remodeling, and it can fall apart on you, but I know this is a different type of product here. You're right. This is called Super Tough, and it's by Armstrong and it's to solve exactly the problem you described. It is much more scratch resistant, and as you can see, it's a lot denser and just won't break as easily as, uh, as the normal acoustical tile. And this uh, comes in uh, two foot square panels. It runs about a dollar a square foot, and uh, it has some other qualities that are pretty terrific too. It's called acoustical tile, and that's because it absorbs sound, about 55% of the sound coming up to it which is great in smaller spaces. And in addition, it uh, will reflect light back into that area. Now here it has a fairly lengthy warranty as well. Yes, it does. It's a 10-year it's a warranty on this stuff, and uh, uh, it's something that ought to be considered. Okay. Well, this is a great option if you're considering closing in a, a ceiling, say in a game room downstairs in a basement. It's not quite as good looking maybe as drywall, but it could be a good option for you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You know, recessed lights are more popular than ever. We're using them in this room for perimeter lighting to give good even lighting throughout the game room. They also can be used for task lighting, such as a kitchen island, to direct the light straight down on top of the island, or a desk section that you may have in a room to put the light right where you need it. Now, these type of lights also can have different trims that are available for them so that you can even pinpoint the light even more 
or to maybe wash a wall with the light depending on the type of trim that you use. Now at this stage of the job, the master electrician's out to evaluate the type of power needs that we have in the room. You know, we have a lot of the recessed lights, a lot of wall outlets, and the 220 volt power we need for the new air conditioning will require a good bit of electricity. We'll go around back and talk with him, see if we have enough power coming into the house to handle this. Our electrical service is located on the rear of the house, and here to talk with us about the condition of it is Mike Kane, our electrical contractor. Well, Mike, I know you've been evaluating what we have here. Uh, what's the status? What we have here is not adequate, Danny. It's very old. Uh, we're going to have to do a service upgrade. I see. Now, that is that because of the addition that we're building in the garage, or did it need a little of attention anyway? It already needed some attention. It was overloaded before we go to add anything, it's overloaded. I see. You know, so many times on remodeling jobs that we do, we run into situations like this where people over the years have added things on and not necessarily to the code. I know they have a little sub-panel here they've tacked on, which is certainly shouldn't have been done, but what will you have to do then in order to correct all of the problems? We'll build a new service and refeed the inside sub-panel from it and we'll add a sub-panel down in the addition we're doing down there to okay. feed all of our new stuff. Okay, now will it? Will you still have it located here? And I assume in the service, you're speaking of the meter can and the panel itself. That's correct. But we're not gonna put it back here. We're gonna move it around on the side of the house. Uh, we don't have any attic space or crawl space here. So there's no way to get from the outside here to the inside. Around on the other side, there is attic space, so we can go up and get into the attic space to run to our inside panel. Okay, well, it sounds a little expensive. What are we going to have to tell the homeowners in terms of the cost of this? You're probably looking at 550 to 750 something like that. Okay, but it'll help considerably as far as getting it up to code, taking care of the supply of power for the new addition, but just overall, it's going to be a lot safer situation, I'm sure. That's correct. Okay. Well, the next question that they're going to ask me is uh, how long will they be without power? In this case, it ain't going to be bad. We're going to be building a new service on the other side of the house here, so we can leave the existing service powered up while we do that. We'll get an inspection and all on our new service before we ever transfer power from here to there. Good, good. That'll minimize that time down. Now, I might mention one of the things that we found here that you want to avoid any time you have a situation like this, and that's at some point, of course, the, this was the original meter base and sub-panel, and at some point they put stucco on the outside of the house and instead of having an electrician like Mike come out and move this piping and conduit out to allow the stucco to go behind it, they simply brought it up to it. This is never a good idea because water can penetrate around this area and cause some problems in the structure of the house. Now Mike, I know you've got a lot of things to do. We'll let you get back to that and stay with us. We'll be right back. Now for a bit of news from the great outdoors as Danny takes a look around the yard. As a homeowner, it's much easier nowadays to maintain your yard with good proper equipment like this lawnmower. But when you're fueling these machines, you need to be real careful. You know, spilled gasoline can be a problem to your yard as far as damage, also to your machinery, and of course it's not very good for the environment. Now here's a few tips to prevent these potential problems. To prevent spilling the fuel, use a funnel or a can with a non-spill nozzle. Also tighten the gas caps to prevent any kind of evaporation. When transporting or storing the fuel, do it the right way, out of the direct sunlight, and tightly close the vent holes in your gas can. You can also lower the harmful emissions from a power tool by maintaining the engine properly. Also, on your lawnmower, keep your blade sharp and the decks of the lawnmower clean. This really helps your engine to run more efficiently and emit fewer pollutants. Another tip, only fill your gas tank two-thirds of the way full. This will allow some room for expansion and help prevent spillage. <laughs> 